Hi folks, this is a short video about Required Practical 8, which is an investigation into how a named factor affects the rate of uh, a reaction in chloroplast. Now the named factor we're going to be investigating is uh, the effect of a substance called ammonium hydroxide, it's a component of weed killer, and we're going to be seeing how that affects an enzyme called a dehydrogenase, which is obviously involved in reduction reactions. Um, so we're actually going to be looking at how ammonium hydroxide affects the time taken for chloroplasts to decolorize a chemical called DC PIP. So here's our isolated chloroplasts, um, and we're going to be preparing um, test tubes of those um, to carry out the reaction. Now this is going to involve uh, goggles on because ammonium hydroxide is not very really nice stuff. Um, and the very first thing uh, that you will need to do to conduct this experiment, of course, is you need to isolate some of these. Now isolating chloroplasts is quite a time-consuming process. So when you did this experiment in the lab, you might have found that was done for you. But the way you do it is that you get spinach. Spinach is pretty good for isolating chloroplasts. And you use a blender to break open the cells and release those organelles. But of course, you need to make sure those organelles are protected when you do this. You will be um, mixing the spinach leaves with something called an isolation buffer. So this is just a, a liquid solution um, that is designed to protect the, the chloroplasts when they are released from the cells. So it's isotonic with chloroplasts, so there will be no osmotic shrinking or bursting, and it's also cold. All of these things that we've done um, are being kept on ice when we're not using them. And we do that to protect them from enzyme action that might damage them. So I'm going to pop those back in the ice bath for the time being. Uh, what you'll have to do after you've blended your spinach in that ice isolation medium, so you'll need to filter it, and we typically use muslin, which is white cotton material, um, to get all the big bits of uh, leaves out of the way, so that you're left with just the suspension of chloroplasts. Now we've got those, they're on ice, happily chilling away in there. Um, we're going to set up some tubes ready for the experiment, so I'm going to need one of these. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple of uh, control tubes. So first one of those I'm going to label as A. Notice I'm putting the labels at the top. You'll see why in a moment when we come to use a colorimeter. B and C. These three tubes are going to play a role in our experiments uh, that will become clear, particularly towards the end. Okay, so what I'm going to do, first things first, I'm going to need some DC pip. There it is. It is blue. It is a dye. So lab coat on whilst you're doing this. Um, Should be enough for this experiment. We can always top up for more if we need it. Okay, I'm going to use a syringe to measure out five centimeters cubed. Okay, and that's going into tube A. I'm also going to put in some water. I'm putting one centimeter cubed of water. one centimetre cube of chloroplast suspension. Again, fresh from the ice bath. There it goes. Okay, so now I've got some chloroplasts, some DC pep and some water in there. So I have a known volume of those three. And with this control experiment, I'm going to immediately wrap the tube in foil to exclude all light. So ensuring that it's got everything it needs for photosynthesis. It's got viable chloroplasts. It's got DC pip, but we're not letting any light get to it. Tube B is also a control, but it's a different type of control. So I'm going to put in my 5 centimeters cubed of DC pip. And then we're also going to put in one centimetre cubed of water. The water we're adding, incidentally, is in place of uh, the ammonium hydroxide that we will be using in some of our trials later on. Uh, obviously, we don't know this in the control experiment, um, but uh, it's to make sure that these have the same volume. Okay, so I've put in my water, and now I'm going to put in some isolation medium. Okay, so this is our isolation medium. 
And that's instead of chloroplast. So this one's going to have everything except the chloroplast. So we've got one which has got everything but no light. We've got another one that's got everything except the chloroplast. So there's only one centimeter cube. And they have got equivalent volumes of liquid in. So those are my two controls. Now tube C is uh, something a little bit different. Tube C we are actually going to be uh, using throughout the experiment. It's like a reference tube. Now, first thing you do is you put six centimeters cubed of water in. Okay, so there we go. One, two, three, six. So six centimeters cubed of water and one centimetre cubed of the chloroplast suspension. So again, it's got an equal volume to all of the other tubes that we're working with, but this one is just water and chloroplast. So you can see it's got a nice pale green colour. Tube C is really important. Tube C is going to be our reference tube. We're going to use it to set up the colorimeter because in this experiment, what we are doing is we're seeing how chloroplasts decolorize DC PIP. And you can see what DC PIP looks like. Okay, it's really blue. But as it gets reduced, it goes colourless. So obviously, if we have a tube with a mixture of chloroplast and DC pip, and it goes completely colourless, it's going to end up looking like this. You're never going to end up with a tube being uh, any clearer than this one here. So this is like our zero line. This is as clear and transparent as the tube can possibly be in this experiment. And we need tube C on hand because we're going to use it to calibrate our colorimeters. More on that later on. Okay. Now the two tubes that we're going to actually collect the data from, so the ones in which we are uh, doing the experiment, we're going to label X. And Y. One of these is going to get ammonium hydroxide in, and one of them is going to get water instead. So it's going to enable us to compare those two to see the effect of ammonium hydroxide on decolorization. So let's get those set up. Okay. Five centimeters cubed of DC pip in X. Five centimeters cubed of DC pip in Y. Okay, we are going to have one centimeter cubed of water in X. Now we're going to use some ammonium hydroxide, a weed killer component. That's going into Y. So there's a bit of ammonium hydroxide. So, rather strong smelling stuff, but we're only putting one centimetre cubed in. That's going into tube Y. Okay, so as soon as I add the chloroplasts, these guys are going to start photosynthesizing. And we need to make the conditions as consistent as possible. So... In comes the lamp, on goes the light, and we're going to position that a known distance away from our tubes. So I'm using a ruler here to make sure that it's pretty much a uh, set distance, it's about 15 centimeters. So that's what the lamp is for there, making sure that those tubes are illuminated. Um, and I'm going to be able to put my chloroplasts in. Of course, as soon as they go in, they're going to start photosynthesizing. So we need to start a stopwatch as soon as the chloroplasts go in. Okay, one centimeter cube is going to go into each of these, and as soon as it's in each, I'm going to start the timer. So it's one centimeter cube in X, one centimeter cube in Y. We're going to leave those in there for exactly two minutes. And at that time, we're going to see how much blue colour has been decolorized. Remember, the more photosynthesis, the more light-dependent reaction that's taking place, the more decolorized this blue is going to be. In the meantime, as I've got two minutes to kill, we're going to take our tube C and we're going to use it to calibrate our colorimeter. So let's have a look at the colorimeter. Okay, it looks like this. Uh, so let's turn it on. The colorimeters can be used to check both absorption and transmission. So transmission is a measure of the amount of light going through. Absorption is 
measure the amount of light being stopped. We want to measure abs, okay, so that's absorption. If it was on the wrong one, you can switch between the two there. Now, in this instance, the higher the number, the more light has been absorbed, i.e. the more blue our test tube is and the less reduction that's take place, taken place. Um, we need to set, set the zero level, so we're going to use our tube C, remember, and we're going to use that to say the absolute minimum, the, the clearest possible tube that it could be, and I'm going to do that by pressing the R button, R for reference, I guess, that's our zero level set. One more thing just to make note of, in that little window there, you can see the number 680. That's 680 nanometers, that's just the colour of light we're going to be using. We've chosen that colour because it's more likely to be absorbed by blue. You'll notice it's red looking. So it's going to be absorbed by the, uh, the blue colour, the DC pip, and we're more likely to get a good absorption reading. OK, let's have a little look at the timer. OK, we've got a little bit of time to kill before we're ready to measure both of those in about 15 seconds. So, what we're going to do, as soon as it gets to two minutes, I'm going to pick these guys up and I'm going to measure their absorbance. OK, in goes tube X. I press the T button for this one. And I've got a reading of 1.39. So I may make a note of that. Very quickly, tube Y. Here we go. Same test. Okay, so you can see, in it goes. Press the T button for the test. It thinks for a little bit, and then it comes back with a reading. 1.41. Okay, so at the moment, we've got a difference between those two of uh, 0.02. 1.41. Now, what we would then go on to do is we would repeat this experiment. Tube X and tube Y can go down the sink. We will repeat them another four times so that we can get repeats in, in our data. We can work out a mean average of the absorption for tube X and tube Y and see if there is a significant difference between them. We've also got to consider our controls and what they tell us. So if we leave them for a little bit longer for the duration of the experiment, we can actually have a little look later on to see if these have changed and what that means if in fact they have. OK, so over the course of this experiment, you'll be able to collect data. So here is mine for my uh, repeats. So two columns, X with water, Y with ammonium hydroxide. And you can see the results, and you can start to judge for yourself whether or not there is an appreciable difference between them. Often in this experiment, it is quite close. Um, and, of course, we need to consider a little bit about the control tubes. So what are they for? Uh, why do we have them? So the control tubes are A and B. Now A had absolutely everything it needed for photosynthesis. It had chloroplasts, it had DC pip. It just didn't have light. If I put that in there and do a quick test. Okay, its absorbance reading is about 1.3, uh, 1.30. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the other one. So very little decolorization has occurred there. And this one B, now I can measure the absorbance of B but it is going to be lower, because if you think about it, it doesn't have these guys in it. It doesn't have chloroph uh, chloroplasts. Um, but what you do notice, these have been out now in the bright light, albeit one of them shielded. They've been out in the room for probably about 40 minutes or so, and there is absolutely no decolorization. So these are our controls to prove that it's the action of light on chloroplasts that decolorizes the DC pip. Um, the repeats, to look at them, there has been very little decolorization. But remember, this is only after two minutes, so this is my last repeat uh, that I just finished a couple of minutes ago. And yes, they look kind of the same shade of blue, but actually, there is a difference, and we have the colorimeter to detect that for us. So in your write-up, you need to consider a few things. You need to consider the role of those controls, and you also need to consider how you would handle this data. What would you do with it? Okay, so there might be some calculations you'd do, and you might also think about a statistical test that it would be suitable to use to find out whether or not there is a significant difference between that one with water and that one with ammonium hydroxide. Okay, that is required practical aid.